folks. The disrespect for John Harbaugh. The guy's great at everything. John everything Harbaugh. he does, he's great. Oh, wow. John Harbaugh. No, John Harbaugh, I'm fine with that. I mean, that was the least problem with your list. <laughs> I'm glad. Listen, I, 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 I see Sean Payton at four, and I'm just happy to know that if somehow I were to ever become an NFL head coach, <laughs> at least I'd be high on Cowherd's coaching records. Like, that's real loyalty, and I respect that about you. It's one of the things I find admirable. I don't understand how far you have Kyle Shanahan down uh, because you and I agree on Brock Purdy. Like, if we if we know what Jimmy Garoppolo was, they were in a Super Bowl and another NFC Championship game. You and I, I think, know what Brock Purdy is. They were in an NFC Championship game and then a Super Bowl. So I would have Shanahan a touch higher. I, I have no issue with the Harbaugh or Tomlin placement, even though they don't have a bunch of recent playoff success. They're just always in the mix. Two guys who I think... Warren, you, and you said you had Dan Campbell right on the outside. Kevin O'Connell, Dan Campbell, had, yeah, yeah, had, yeah. Yes, so Kevin O'Connell was one of them. And Shane Steichen, I think, is interesting. It Very early, you know what I mean, just a year in, but it's just a year for D'Amico. He had a disaster at quarterback situation last year after Anthony Richardson got hurt. I liked what he did. And then one other thing I, I'm remiss to, to, you know, leave out. What you're saying about Kevin Stefanski is true. But it is. it was also true for Baker Mayfield, who was the quarterback that took over that awful team, and then they made the playoffs. One of his two playoff appearances with Baker, his playoff win with Baker, all that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's true, but I know you've come around on Baker. I like the list in general. Yeah. I think McDermott's a little high, Shanahan's a little low, and that's my biggest Hey, point. let me throw this at you. Mike Garofalo, yeah. who does a terrific job, yeah. just, just reported this, that – Brandon Ayuk, the very talented receiver for the Niners, has requested a trade because they're not that the Niners and him are far apart. Now, th th we have talked about this is that Purdy's not a deep ball thrower. Ayuk can be a really stretch the field player. That's not what, and again, if Josh Allen's the quarterback, <laughs> I think you resign him. That's part of it. The other thing is, I think. McCaffrey and Debo and the two receivers they drafted. Ayuk's a weird fit for them. It's like it's like we talked about Julius Randle earlier. Really good player, bad fit for the Knicks. Don't re-sign him. I think Ayuk's exceptional. I get this move by the Niners if they moved off him. What's your reaction on this? My my reaction is I think this will hurt Purdy a lot. I think that they listen. What they they've paid everyone. And they are planning, I think, at you know a year from now to have to play, pay Purdy. But C Mac's the most expensive running back in the league. They paid Debo. Trent Williams, the most expensive left tackle in the league. They have uh, Nicky Bosa's contract is unfathomable in the way it's going to kick in shortly. And so I understand you you can't. And Kittle makes good money for his position. So you have to pick and choose your spots. But I think this will be very painful for them. I also, I, everyone obviously is immediately going to connect him to Washington because of Jaden Daniels, that makes sense, yeah. and Pittsburgh because he and Tomlin have kind of been openly flirting, it would seem, about a partnership at some point. So that makes sense. But there's a lot of teams that could use Brandon Ayuk. I don't know that the Niners would trade with the team. They're playing in the NFC Championship game in this clip right here. But the Lions who still don't really have that wide receiver, too, and are clearly all in right now, that makes a lot of sense. You would have to think the Buffalo Bills, who right now yeah. have a pretty naked wide receiver yeah. room, but maybe their hesitancy would be, we, you know, st we, the Diggs thing didn't end great, and if they're concerned with Ayuk and paying him. But he is an excellent player. Yeah. That It's going to be hard-pressed to find a team that couldn't use him and I just don't know if the Niners are going to have a restricted pool of teams they're willing to trade with. But Brandon Ayuk will get you a first-round pick. Yes. And, yes. and probably a little bit more. He's that type of player, and I imagine he's going to get traded. By the way, speaking of fits, uh, I, I had said uh, the Knicks, Isaiah Hartenstein only averages eight points a game, but he was a great fit for that team because he was a real center yeah. who could defend fives. As the league is getting bigger – and the Knicks often play four guards, Julius Randle on a max contract feels like a bad fit. I think he's oh, got yeah. value. I don't like this story today that James Dolan loves him.
What say you? Yeah. Well, listen, one of the best things that has happened to the Knicks over the last five years is that the sphere in Vegas was being built and opening. And so James Dolan was focused on that and not the Knicks. He let the adults and professionals run the Knicks. And shockingly, all of a sudden, the Knicks have a real culture, a real roster, and they're real contenders. James Dolan now seems to be back in the mix. He's, you know, releasing statements about saying how the NBA is going to become more like the NFL as if that would be a thing people think is bad. (laughs) And now he's seemingly meddling a bit in the front office stuff. One of the biggest benefits, in my opinion, to the contract Jalen Brunson just took is it allows the Knicks the flexibility to trade Julius Randle, not as like a salary dump or just pick up picks, but to get quality players in return. I think Julius Randle is a good NBA player. He has a brutal postseason resume, but it's a pretty small sample size, but it is really brutal from a field goal percentage standpoint. Yeah. But I don't know that he fits fully with this team the Knicks have built, and I think he's more useful probably as a trade chip if they are trying to acquire another center so it's not just Mitchell Robinson as their only true five in the front court. I certainly don't think giving – when you're going to have to pay Bridges, you already paid OG, you just paid Jalen, and even though it's not the five for 270, four for 160 is still significant. All those guys – I, yeah, I wouldn't give Julius Randle a max extension, that's for sure. Um, USA Basketball beat Australia. Um, I I don't I think it's kind of ridiculous that Jalen Brown's not on the team, but I do think after your top six players historically, Olympic teams get very political. I think Nike has injected itself here with Kyrie and Jalen. What do you make of the overall rotation of this team and what we should expect? Well, I think, listen, right before we went on vacation on First Things First, I gave what my starting five would be, Steph, Ant, LeBron, Tatum, and Joel Embiid, and Steve Kerr, obvious longtime fan of First Things First, went with that exact starting five, so (laughs) I think they're off to a good start. Um, It is, so here is what's tricky. There is a strong argument to be made, Colin, that for the 12-man roster, have eight stars and then four glue guys. Guys who won't care if they don't play, won't care if they don't get shots, are out there for one specific thing, whether it be their defense or their rebounding or their free throw, whatever, you know, guys like Derek White who are just happy to be there. There is an argument that that makes sense because why have uh, Devin Booker as, and he's an excellent player, but as your 10th man, when he might not be happy as the 10th man and, and he's kind of redundant. The, my biggest issue with Jalen Brown being excluded is they clearly didn't go with that game plan. They want they went stars across the board, and I think they made a mistake initially in picking Kawhi over Jalen because Jalen is better than Kawhi at this point, and then they doubled down on that mistake by not replacing Kawhi with Jalen. Jalen seems adamant that it's a Nike thing at, at this point He seems to have a strong case that Nike, you know, had a real influence on it. Ultimately, it won't matter because I I know folks try to create a scenario where the U.S. is vulnerable. The United States is not vulnerable in this Olympics. Since they lost the one Olympics they've lost since the pros, they have lost one game total. It was in the qualifying round. It didn't even matter. They win by an average of 12 plus points. And there is not a single team in this tournament that has two players that would make our team. They, they, listen, Shea on Canada, Jokic on Serbia, Giannis on Greece, we know. But the second best guy on all those teams would not make this roster. So I'm not worried about the U.S. at all because they were up 24 in the second half against Australia, let their foot off the gas in, in a game that was a warm-up game. Finally, I'm viewed as very overly critical on Aaron Rodgers, though I don't think I am. J-Mac is viewed as two pro Jets. You land in the middle. I have said that I think the Jets' season will just come down to the offensive line. I think for old quarterbacks, Russell Wilson's an advantage of how he didn't have one and struggled. Brady and Stafford had one. Kirk Cousins Atlanta has one. I think all three will flourish. Two already have. 
I don't think it's a great O-line. I think it's overvalued by the PFF and all those kind of sites. What do you expect this year? Uh, I think I think it's a very 9-8 team, and I think the yes, O-line. Yes, of course. Yeah. That's correct. It's an eight or nine win team. And everyone's going to try to sell you this bill of goods of, oh, my God. But they won seven games with that quarterback play last year. That's the argument that you're that we heard a year ago, by the way, when they won seven games with the, the quarterback play before Aaron got there. Then they won seven games again. And then when you actually look at the games they won over the last two years, they have four quality victories over act. Pardon me, actual NFL starting quarterbacks. Everyone else is either a rookie quarterback or a backup quarterback or the quarterback was injured in the game. That, and as far as Aaron goes, I need someone to cogently explain to me why he will be better than his last year in Green Bay. Thank you. And the only argument anyone can make is, oh, he cares again. Like, what? Like that, you're really, that's the argument. Oh, he had chip on his shoulder now. <laughs> Meanwhile, his last year in Green Bay, he what? Was mailing it in. What about the final game of that year? The, the final game of the NFL season in Lambeau against a divisional rival, win and go to the playoffs. Wasn't motivated that night? After the game, he seemed sad walking off the field with Randall Cobb. Why would this Jets team get a better Aaron Rodgers than that Packers team did. Remove the Achilles. Let's pretend it didn't happen. Do they have a better coach? No, the Packers have a great offensive mind in Matt LaFleur. The Packers have Bob Sala and an offensive coordinator they tried to replace in the offseason, but they couldn't competently do it. Oh, it's all the, the, these amazing weapons. I mean, I, Garrett Wilson's awesome. Brees Hall is a good to very good player who last year, even though the Jets tried to game the system in the final game of the year and give him 40 touches so he get to 1,000 yards, the coaching staff couldn't even do the math properly, and he finished at 992 when the whole game was to get him to 1,000. Like, the Jets don't have elite weapons. They have one great receiver. They don't have an elite offensive line. They just don't have a disaster at the offensive line anymore. And they don't have an elite quarterback. A quarterback who at age 38, was league average across the board, had the worst season that he'd had in 12 years, and then tears his Achilles, does not all of a sudden get awesome. He might get back to that level, and that level's not good enough. So, no, that's that's a very simple, obvious point, and I, I understand that the Jets have a lot of fans, yeah. which is remarkable because they've been one of the least competent organizations for 50 years across sports, <laughs> and I think this year probably continues that. No, it's, uh, I mean, now the Yankees are struggling. Mets, Jets, Giants, you know, it's the Nets. I mean, it's, it's about to be a Knicks town here, bro. <laughs> I, I think the Yankees can turn it around, but the Knicks got the juice right now. There's no doubt about it. Nick Wright, good seeing you, buddy, as always. Appreciate See it. Ya. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.